Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Chad, and welcome back to my course on quantitative research for qualitative researchers. An A-B test is a simple yet powerful experimental method used to compare two versions of something, such as a web page, a marketing email, or a product feature, to determine which one performs better based on a specific metric. The idea is to split your audience randomly into two groups. Group A, the control group, sees the original version, while group B, the test group, sees the new or modified version. By tracking how each group responds, you can measure the impact of the change. What about the share out? I think it's time for a bar graph. We've created a basic data frame with two columns and two rows, which will be enough for our basic graph. We went ahead and created a names column with descriptive names, control group and experimental group, because that'll be easier to graph in a minute. This looks great. I want to address something very controversial in the A-B testing world. Adding error bars to your graphs. A lot of people think error bars are important here to show the uncertainty in the graph. And I understand this point. It's best practices in any academic graph for sure. I disagree with this idea though, or at least say it depends on the audience you're presenting to. Here's a few reasons I think you shouldn't present your error bars. Number one, they're misleading without context. Stakeholders unfamiliar with statistics might misinterpret error bars as representing variability in the data, e.g. a standard deviation, rather than uncertainty about the means, e.g. a standard error or confidence intervals. This can lead to confusion about what the graph is actually showing. Point number two, stakeholders often care about trends, not uncertainty. In the product world, you're looking for action-oriented decisions, and stakeholders typically care about whether one group performs better than another. A bar graph without error bars makes it easier to highlight trends and differences between groups without introducing statistical complexity. Number three, error bars can overcomplicate visuals. If you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of the Coco Chanel test. And adding error bars can make a graph look busy, particularly if there are multiple groups or overlapping intervals. A simple bar graph with clear labels and annotations can often communicate your findings more effectively to a non-technical audience. Number four, there are other better ways to communicate uncertainty. If uncertainty is important to your message, you can explain it more intuitively. One good way is annotations or text. So instead of showing error bars, include a brief note or call out in the graph somewhere. Something like, results are statistically significant at P less than 0.05. What do you all think? Make sure you comment on this video. Tell me I'm wildly wrong. I'm amazingly right and super smart. Whichever way, I'd love to hear from you. So, you know, jump in the comments and let me know.